Okay, let's see how you're going on this one. First thing that we have to notice is, even though this says five years, how many years are we going to go for? We're doing effective rate. We always go for one year unless the time is less than a year. So the five years, all that really tells us is that this is at least a year, so we go for one full year. So what we're going to find is we're going to find the future value at one year. So that's going to be $4,500 times 1 plus 0 0.09 is my 9% is a decimal. Divided by 12. The 12 is because it is monthly. 12 periods in a year. So the power of the number of periods in one year is still 12. So we're going to do 4,500 times parentheses 1 plus 0 0.09 divided by 12, close parentheses, to the power of 12 equals 4922.13. That is the future value. What is step two? <coughs> it's to find the amount of interest. So the amount of interest is 4922.13 minus 4500, which is going to come out to be $422.13. And now on to step three, which is going to be the yield or the effective rate. So that is going to be putting in the 422.13 in for the interest amount in our simple interest formula. Our principal is still 4,500. So we're looking for the rate and our time is one year. So 4,500 times 1 is just 4,500, so I'm not going to bother combining those. I'm just going to divide by 4,500. So 422.13 divided by 4,500. 0 0.093807. Now I told you to go at least five digits, so that would have been 0 0.09381 most likely. Moving the decimal point, that becomes 9.381, which is going to round whatever decimal place they tell us to, tenth or hundredth. We're just going to leave it as 9.381 uh, 9 for now as our effective rate. <coughs> How many came up with that? Okay. How many messed up and did five years instead of one? Remember, if it's more than a year, you're just going to use one year. The other alternative to that would be now find the yield is the same as asking find the effective rate. Just so you know, find the yield for seven thousand dollars at twelve percent. Compounded quarterly for six months. So here we are going to only take this for six months. So we're finding our future value. It's not for one year, it's only for six months because it's less than a year as our term. So we're going to do the 7,000 times. 1 plus 12% is 0.12 divided by how many periods are in a year? 4. Now some people are like, well, but we're only going 6 months. There's only 2 periods. Yes, but we still divide by the number of periods in a year even though it's less than a year. Quarterly means 4 periods a year, so it's going to be divided by 4. Where the 6 months comes into play is our power. 6 months is only 2 periods, so it's to the power of 2. 
seven thousand times one plus point one two divided by four to the power of two. Seventy four twenty six thirty. Seven thousand four hundred and twenty six dollars and thirty cents. So then next we need to find our interest. Seventy four twenty six thirty minus seven thousand gives us four hundred and twenty six dollars and thirty cents. That's our interest. So finally our effective rate or a yield. $426.30 equals our $7,000 principal times our rate times either six months would be six over 12 or one half, however you want to do it. Now this time before we divide, we do have to combine the principal and the time. 7,000 times 6 twelves is 3,500. And then we'll divide by the 3,500. Four twenty six point three zero divided by thirty five hundred point one two one eight is my rate, and as a percent, that's twelve point one eight percent effective rate or yield. Look familiar? Any questions? So that's probably the toughest concept of the present and future value of compound interest from last week. So this week, we're going to focus on annuities. Now, annuities, an annuity is simply a, a classification that we use where we, we uh, pay money into an investment on a regular basis, and then we can draw money back out of that investment on a regular basis. Um, it has two, two parties and an annuity. There is an annuitant. That is usually the customer, the investor. And then there is a payer. And that is the company or the investment. And generally, it is an insurance company. In the late 80s and early 90s, annuities were a really hot product. Insurance companies sold them I mean, a whole life insurance package for retirement investments. And they've kind of slowed down, but it's still, um, annuities are still very popular. They're just not necessarily a big insurance product anymore. Uh, many of you probably have heard of a TSA, tax sheltered annuity, and that's what that is, is you're paying in a set amount on a regular basis. You can change that amount once a year, or I think there's twice a year if you have some sort of a lifestyle change. Um, and then at the end, you can draw that money back out. Now, you can draw you. So there's two stages, as we we're mentioning here, of an annuity. One is the accumulation phase. And in this phase, or this stage of the investment, money is being paid in. So the balance is building. So at this point, the balance is going up by not only interest, but also new payments. The second phase of annuity is called the liquidation phase. Liquidation phase is where you're drawing out. So the balance is declining.
at least in most cases. Um, you can set the, the amount that you draw out of an annuity so that you're drawing out less than or equal to the amount of interest so that the balance will either stay the same or continue to slightly climb. But for the most part, you're drawing out more than the interest amount, so the balance is going to decline during this liquidation phase. Now, you don't have to go through a liquidation phase. You can do an annuity, you can build a balance, and then you can draw it out as one lump sum. The difference is the amount that you're going to draw out is much, the total amount to draw out is much less. The advantage to it is you have it all at once instead of having to draw it out over periods of time. Once you start drawing out an annuity, there are usually penalties to, to take it out as a lump sum after you start that. Um, if you take it out as a lump sum at the very beginning of the liquidation phase, there usually isn't too harsh of a penalty. <coughs> um, so let's take a look at the math behind each of these. Um, we're going to do, there's actually two different types of annuity we're going to look at. There's an ordinary annuity. Kind of like ordinary interest, an ordinary annuity is what's going to be assumed unless it's stated otherwise. In ordinary annuity, payments are made at the end of a period. So let's say you're going to invest a certain amount of money every year for the next 20 years. You pay your money in at the end of each year. Or you're drawing it out in an ordinary annuity. You're going to draw the money out at the end of each year. Each year. Or if you're drawing it out monthly, it would be at the end of each month. The other side of that is an annuity due. In an annuity due, the payments are made at the beginning of the period. So if you're investing in an annuity due, you make your payments at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the month or whatever spacing you have on your payments. The advantage to that is that you get that extra period's worth of interest. You get, if it's a yearly, you get an extra year's worth of interest. Monthly, you get an extra month's worth of interest because you're paying it in that much earlier. Of course, the disadvantage is you have to pay it in sooner. You have to have that money to pay in at the beginning of that period. <clears throat> so let's look at ordinary annuity. and the accumulation phase. Um, it is possible, by the way, to purchase what's called a single payment annuity. Uh, this is done a lot of times um, for tax purposes, if you're trying to avoid inherit inheritance tax. If you have a lot of money and you want to pass it on to someone else, or if you just want to invest it, you've saved up your retirement and you have a, lump, a large amount of money for retirement, and you want to make sure that you only get so much every month or so much every year to live off of, you can take that single lump sum and put it in an annuity and draw it out. So it is possible to skip the accumulation phase and go directly to that, that liquidation phase where you're drawing it out to use it, but it's not very common. Usually it's more common that you're accumulating and making the regular payments and at the end you cash it out in a lump sum rather than the other way around. So anyway, accumulation phase of an ordinary annuity. So in other words, you are paying in this money, trying to build up a sum that you want to have at the end. So there's two different um, items we can look at here. One is if we know the payment and the time and, and of course everything else, we can figure out what the future value is how much is going to be worth at the end of that period of time. The formula for that is the future value is going to equal the amount of that regular payment times, <clears throat> yes, that is three open parentheses there, and yes, it is necessary to have all three of them. One plus... R is our annual rate 
divided by x, which is our number of periods in a year, to the power of n, which is our number of periods. Remember, n is x times t, um, the number of periods in a year times the number of years. So minus 1, close parentheses, divided by, <clears throat> open parentheses, our rate divided by x, and then we close our parentheses twice. Let's take a look at an example and how it fits into this formula. <coughs> Let's say that you pay in $100 per month at 6% Twenty years. Notice I didn't tell you what the compounding was because if you're paying in every month, it's going to be compounded every time you make a payment or every month. <clears throat> so your balance, your future value at the end of twenty years, is going to be your hundred dollars times one, two, three. One plus six percent is 0 0.06. Divided by, well, we're paying in every month, so we're going to divide by 12. To the power of, what's my number of periods here? Well, per month is 12 periods per year times 20 years is 240 periods. That's 200, the power of 240. <clears throat> Minus 1, close parentheses. Divided by, open parentheses. 0 0.06 divided by 12, close and close. So let's punch this in the calculator. 100 times 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12, close, to the power of 240. Now on my calculator, when I do a power, I have to get out of it by hitting the arrow key. Minus 1, close, divided by, open, 0 0.06 divided by 12, Close and close. Equals 46,204.09. So what that is saying is at the end of those 20 years, that $100 a month at 6% will become $46,204.09. So the question is, is that a good deal? Well, let's look at how much you paid in. You paid in $100 a month times 12 months a year times 20 years. Which means you paid in $24,000. <coughs> So by having it in an annuity, you more than double, or you about doubled your money. Part of the reason for that is 6% interest is very, very poor for a 20-year investment. Um, let's change that to the exact same conditions, only we're going to go at 9%. I'm not going to redo this formula. I'm going to punch into my calculator. So 100 times 1, 2, 3. 1 plus 0 0.09 instead of 0 0.06. Divided by 12. Close. Still to the power of 240. Arrow out of there. Minus 1. Close. Divided by open. 0 0.09. Divided by 12. Close and close. 66,788 68.69. So it goes from not quite doubling to almost tripling. So that's 6% to 9%. The reason I showed you that is like we mentioned last week and a couple weeks ago, there's a huge difference. A couple percent on an investment makes a huge difference when we're talking about overall length of time. So keep that in mind that you know if you're getting 3 or 4% on your money and you got a chance to get 5%, that is worth the effort to change it over. 
<laughs> okay, well, let's look at another example here. Let's find the future value of $5,000 per year at 8% for 30 years. Um, a lot of people make their IRA, IRA or retirement contributions at the end of a year. I um, mean, you do a lump sum, it's 5000 or 5500 or something like that now. Um, so that's where I'm putting the 5000 in. So finding the future value of that. Our future value is $5,000 times 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 0.08 divided by how many times a year? Per year means just once a year. So divided by 1. So don't even really have to put the divided by 1 in there if we don't want to. To the power of how many periods? Well, one period a year for 30 years is 30 periods. Minus 1. Close parentheses divided by, again, it's 0.08 divided by 1. We wouldn't really have to put the divided by 1 in there. <clears throat> So let's try this. 5,000 times 1, 2, 3. 1 plus 0 0.08. I'm not going to bother with the divided by 1. The power of 30. Take it out of the power. Minus 1. Close. Divided by. Open. 0 0.08. I'm not going to bother with the divided by 1 again. Close and close. <clears throat> so. 566,416.06. So 560, that's a half a million dollars, more than a half a million dollars at 8%. <clears throat> if I want to find the total interest earned, once again, I would have to put in the total payments. So to find the interest earned, I first have to find my total payments. That's going to be 5,000 a year times 30 years, which is going to give me 150,000. So that means my interest then is that 566,416 minus 150. 416,416.06 in interest. That's a pretty good return. Any questions? Um, you got an arrow key there. You got the, the four arrows. Yeah. Just hit the right arrow. should get out of it. Either the right arrow or the down arrow. Yeah, otherwise it makes, makes it really ugly. Find the future value of $300 per month at 12% for 35 years. Try this in your notes. See what you come up with. We will talk about it. So how do we set this one up? Well, our payment is how much? $300. Times, of course, one, two, three. One plus, what's our rate? Twelve percent, so point one two, divided by how many payments per year? This is monthly, so it'll be twelve. 
the power of how many periods in the, the length of this? So 35 years times monthly, so times 12, is 420. So the power of 420, so minus 1, close parentheses, divided by... <clears throat> Point one two divided by twelve. Close and close. So let's see what we get out of the calculator. Three hundred times one two three. One plus point one two divided by twelve. Close. Power of four twenty. Arrow out. Minus one. Close. Divided by. Open. 0.12 divided by 12, close and close. 1,929,287.84. So 1,929,287.84 is our balance. That's just $300 a month. Of course, it is 35 years and 12% is pretty good interest. How many of you came up with that? Cool. Now, just like with the compound interest, there is a table for this. Your table is in your book on page 495 through 496. Excuse me? Yes. Okay, on your calculator, when you do a power, let's say you have 6 to the power of 9, and you want to keep doing either the up arrow or the down arrow. I think my calculator uses either one. Nope, I have to use, sorry, not the up, the, either the down arrow or the right arrow. My calculator looks like you have to use the right arrow. Um, some calculators, it's the down arrow, or the others, it's the right arrow to get out of the power. And now I could keep entering numbers up here if I wanted to. Do you want me to give you a second to try to enter that formula and see if you make it work? What calculator do you have? Is that a TI or is it a Sharp? Or? It's a Casio. So on the Casio, you should still have, this should be like a round circle. And on the round circle, there should be like little arrows on it. How do you get into the powers? Right. Okay. Well, let's do another example before we switch over to the table, just so you can try it and make sure it works. So let's do $1,000 per quarter. at 7% for 10 years. So try that in your calculator. We'll go over it in a minute. So the formula would be future value. 1,000 times 1, 2, 3. 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by quarterly now. So 4 to the power of 10 years quarterly would be 10 times 4 is 40. Minus 1, close, divided by, open, 0 0.07 divided by 4, close and close. <coughs> so, 1,000, oops, cleared out. 1,000 times 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 4, close. Power, 40, arrow, minus 1, close, divided by open, 0 0.04, not 0 0.04, 0 0.07, divided by 4, close and close. 57, 234, 13. How many of you had that? Okay, the... Arrow key still not working for you, or? No. It's 
not. Hmm. What model Casio do you have? FX300. There's nobody in the room that has a Casio, is there? So I don't have one to look at. Um, it's got to be with the arrow keys that we'll have to do it. But we'll have to. We'll take a look at it here um, at the end of class if we if we have to. Um, I just am not not picturing the keyboard for that one. Is there way you can take it up and hold it up to the camera for me, and I can see the keyboard? You got it. Puts it in parentheses. Gotcha. Oh, sure. It has like a little up arrow. And yep. Parentheses. Okay. So you got to close the parentheses and it'll take it out of there. Okay. So for yours, instead of an arrow, you got to do a close parentheses and it ends it. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, in our books, on page 495 through 496, there is an annuity table. Now, this has the same weakness as the table for compound interest, and that is that it only has very select percents listed in it. So... Um, Let's do an example here. Let's find the future value of $3,500. Well, let's do this. $1,500 per quarter at 6% for 15 years. The reason I did it per quarter, I was going to do per year, but I want to have to adjust sums a little bit. So remember, there's two things I need to use these tables. One is the rate per period. And that is always my annual rate, which is the 6%, divided by the number of periods in a year. This is per quarter, so 6% divided by 4 is 1.5%. So on the top of the table, you're going to find 1.5%, which is almost right in the middle. The second piece of information we need is the number of periods. Well, the number of periods is going to be four periods per year, because it's per quarter, times 15 years, or 60 periods. Now you'll notice this only goes up to 100 periods. So quarterly, that means you can only go up to 25 years. Monthly, well, 12 periods a year, you'd only be able to go up to 8 years would be 96 periods. That 96 isn't even on here. So you can see this table is very, very limited in what it can do. So anyway, we would look up 1.5 on the top of the table, 1.50%. Oh we would look up 60 on the left side of the table. And we find 96.215 is what we get. Now what that is telling us is we're going to take our monthly payment, or not our monthly quarterly payment in this case, of $1,500 times 96.215. giving us $144,322.50. So that would be the future value of that $1,500 per quarter for 15 years. At 6%. Well, let's figure out that using the formula and see how close it is. So that'd be 1,500 times 1, 2, 3, 
1 plus 0.06. Now we're back to using the full 6% because we're dividing by 4 right in the formula here. To the power of 60 periods still. Minus 1. Close. Divided by. Open. 0 0.06 divided by 4. Close and close. So 1,500 times 1, 2, 3. 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4. Close. Power of 60. Minus 1. Close. Divided by, open, 0 0.06 divided by 4, close and close. Equals 144,321.98. So you can see here the table value is off by 52 cents. Not a terrible error, but obviously um, a bank or insurance company is not going to tolerate 52 cents. Um, the table is just a very approximate value, just like we said with the compound interest last week. Uh, the tables are a quick way of doing it, but they're not terribly accurate. They're always going to be off by that round off here because they can only go so many decimal places. So the same thing goes when you do your quiz. What, what's that? Yeah, so on the homeworks and quizzes again, on the homework, you don't have to worry about it. If your answer is off by even just a couple dollars in many cases, that's because you use the formula instead of the table. Um, on the quiz, if that happens, let me know, and I will go in and change the grades on the quiz for you so you, so you have those right. Personally, I prefer that you use the formula over the table, but I know my math lab um, often will bring up the table for you to use. Okay. It is a touch early, but rather than starting annuity due before break, let's go ahead and take our break. It's 617 now, so let's start back up at 627.